Hello and welcome to the demonstration. My name is Philip and I'll be presenting for you today and in this demonstration we're going to be doing a bathroom design using Chief Architect software. We have two versions of our software, Chief Architect Premier and Chief Architect Interiors. Chief Architect Premier is going to be for full residential and light commercial design, whereas Chief Architect Interiors will focus specifically on kitchen, bath, and interior design. We're going to be using Chief Architect Premier today, but everything we do in today's demonstration you can do in Chief Architect Interiors, and if you haven't used Chief Architect yet or you're using an older version of the software, you can download a free trial at chiefarchitect.com slash free trial. We're going to get started by drawing out our initial floor plan and then vaulting the ceiling and then we're going to adjust some of our materials of the structure. Next we're going to design our cabinetry and create some wall elevations, then complete a glass shower, design our electrical plan, go through the 3D rendering options in the software, and then go through creating schedules and layout sheets for the plan. So let's get started. So here's a picture of what our final design is going to look like. As mentioned earlier, we're going to have that master bathroom with the ceiling vaulted, and we're going to have some his and her cabinetry on either side of the floor plan with the tub towards the back and a little alcove area. And then we're also going to have a glass shower and then leading to our master bedroom. In Chief Architect, at the top of your screen, you'll have your common architectural tools. And these are going to be tools like your walls, doors, windows, and so forth. And these same options are available through the menus at the top of the screen. Additionally, on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll have your library browser, which will contain over 100,000 different items and materials to use throughout your design. I'm going to go ahead and close our library browser. And then we're just going to draw the initial shape of our structure. So I'm going to go over to our wall tools. And there's a lot of different options, an exterior wall, interior wall, foundations, and so forth. And if you're an existing Chief Architect user, you'll notice these two new options in X11 for a glass wall, which will be for a shower and a glass pony wall. I'm going to go ahead and use our straight interior wall. And I'm just going to click and drag the general shape of our floor plan. And you'll notice that as I drag my walls, I get that temporary dimension, letting us know how big our walls we're drawing are. And you'll notice that they're currently in feet and inches. At the top of the screen, you'll have this drop down for your dimension defaults. And I'm going to switch it over to our NKBA dimension defaults, which will be more appropriate for a bathroom or kitchen project. And there's lots of different dimension defaults, and these will be pre-saved defaults that will pick up things like a wall surface, such as drywall versus a framing layer, or will ignore things like electrical items or pick up cabinetry. So for a bath project, the NKBA dimension defaults will be most appropriate. And then I'm going to keep dragging, and you'll notice how that dimension is now changed to inches. And I'm not trying to be really precise with our dimensions right now, because we'll come back in a second and uh, touch those up. So now that I've got the general shape of our floor plan, let's go ahead and take a 3D view. And I can do this by going to the camera tool and our toolbar. And you'll notice that we have a couple of different tools in Chief Architect. A full camera, which will be more of a first person point of view. A full overview, which will be good if you have a roof and want to see a full design. A floor overview, which is what we're going to be using, which will remove the ceiling from your design. Or a framing overview. For a kitchen bath project, our floor overview and our full camera work pretty well. So I'm going to use our floor overview. And you can see how we instantly enter a 3D view. And you can navigate through this view just using your mouse and zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. You can work in 2D and 3D in Chief Architect. So to do that, I'm just going to grab my tab here at the top and then drag it over to the side. And you could have also done that by going to Window and then Tile Vertically or by pressing Shift F6 on your keyboard. One of the major advantages of working in both 2D and 3D is that you can see your changes instantly occur in the plan and to help ensure your accuracy and avoid mistakes. So next let's go ahead and dimension out our floor plan. And so to do that we first need to get some dimensions. I'm going to press spacebar which will bring up our select objects and then just click once in this room and in the bottom toolbar there's a new option for auto interior dimensions. If you're an existing Chief Architect user, this tool is previously up in the menu at the top, but has since moved to the bottom toolbar. So clicking once, we'll get interior dimensions going from the drywall surfaces in our plan. 
So next I'm going to start dimensioning our walls and the first wall I want to dimension is this one that currently reads as 50 inches. So in order for this wall to resize either the wall on the left or the wall on the right is going to have to change its position to account for this wall's change in size. I'm going to select the wall on the right and then select our dimension and then just type in our new desired dimension and press enter and you can see how that instantly updates in both our 3D and our 2D view. The next wall I want to resize is this wall I have dimensioned which currently reads as 41 inches. So using that same technique I'm going to select the wall on the top, select our dimension, type in our new dimension and press enter and we can see those changes occur. And I'm just going to continue doing this going in a clockwise direction throughout our floor plan and going in the same direction as you're dimensioning your floor plan will help ensure your accuracy. And then the last dimension we need for this floor plan is going to be the dimension of this wall, which is going to be 176 inches, and press enter. And then I can click on this room, click on the auto interior dimensions to refresh our dimension, and there we have our floor plan dimensioned. So next let's go ahead and add that barn door that you see towards the back side of the plan. And let's do this by working in our 3D view. So I'm going to make our 3D view our full screen by just grabbing the tab and bring it into the center of the plan. And then I'm going to use our mouse orbit camera to rotate to about the position in the plan that I want to place that sliding barn door. And then I'm just going to go up to our door tools and go down to our barn door. And if you're an existing Chief Architect user, you'll notice three new door types where a fixed door, which will be like a side light, a barn door, and then a glass shower door. And I'm just going to select our barn door and you can see that little preview I get in the wall as to where it's going to be displayed and when I click once it'll instantly be added to the model. In our picture of the design you can see that we have the hardware going the other way so let's make this adjustment real quick. So I'm going to select the door and then in the bottom toolbar we have this option to change the opening hinge side and there our hardware has gone to the other side and then I just want to make sure that this door is centered on our room by using the center object tool and then you can see how we get that gray dash line showing us where we will be centered on. And there we've readjusted that door in our room. Let's take a look at this in our floor plan view. So I'm going to go back to our floor plan view tab and then just navigate down to where it's at. And you can see that Chief Architect has automatically put a door label on the door and you can see where that barn door is sliding. And if you zoom in close, you'll notice that you have handles where you can adjust how much that barn door will be open in your view. And if we go back to our 3D view, select the door, and select show door open in 3D, we can now see that barn door open in 3D. And that's all the work we need to do on this door for this plan. So next let's go ahead and add some windows to our structure. And our windows are going to be located in the little bath alcove that we have. So next let's go ahead and add these. So I'm going to select the mouse orbit camera and just rotate our 3D view over into our little alcove and then to add a window I'm just going to go up to our window tool select window and then come over to the wall that I want to place it in and you can see that little 3D outline as to where it's going to place click once and place it and then next we need to edit the size and style of this window so I'm going to double click on the window and here you can edit a lot of information about this object Currently we are on the general panel where we can change the window type, size, and position of the plan. And you can also change other options for it. Change the casing going around the window, add a lintel, add a sill, sash, frame, lights, change the shape, arch, treatments, and so forth. So there's a lot of things that you can do to customize the window to your specific needs. For this design, we're going to go back to our general panel and change the window type to be a fixed glass window. And then we're also going to change the window width to be 27 inches. And then we're going to leave the height the same, but we're going to change the floor to top to be 72 inches. And when you press tab, it'll update these fields. And you can see those changes reflect in your little 3D preview on the right hand side. And once you're happy with how your window is shaping up, you can go ahead and press OK. And then next, if you take a look at a photo of our alcove area, we have an exact copy of this window on the other side. So if we select the window, in the bottom toolbar we can press copy. And now my mouse changes and when I click once I can place a copy anywhere I want in a wall 
but we also have another tool called Reflect About Object. And when I select this tool, I get a gray dashed line showing objects I can reflect this window about. So I'm just going to go ahead and reflect it about the back of our alcove. And there we've got an exact copy of our window positioned exactly the same in this back wall. And then I just need to add one more larger window in the very back. So what I'm going to do is, with our window selected, go ahead and copy it. And then just click once to place it in the back. And then go ahead and open it up and then make it a little bit wider and we're going to change this value to be 48 inches and press tab and you can see how that updates in our 3D preview and then just click OK and then we just want to verify that we have this window centered in our plan so in the bottom toolbar we'll select the center object tool and then just come into our plan and you can see that gray dashed line showing where we're centered in the room and then you can see those adjustments take place and then that's going to be all the work that we're going to do on our windows. Next in our project, we're ready to vault our ceilings. Currently we have a flat ceiling in our plan, but the final design is going to remove the flat ceiling and replace it with a vaulted ceiling. So let's go ahead and make this change. So I'm going to go ahead and close this 3D view. And to remove the flat ceiling on our current plan, we need to double click in the room. And this will bring up the room specification dialog box where you can change information about this room. Here you can change the room type, the living area information, change information about the structure. If you're using Chief Architect Premier, change information about decks, add room moldings, wall coverings, the fill, style, and materials about rooms. So the first thing we're going to do with this dialog box is go to our general panel and we're going to specify this room type to be a master bathroom. And doing this is important because it's going to add a room label into our room. So when we create a schedule with our cabinets later, we can see what room those are present in. Additionally, specifying a room type will adjust any materials that have been predefined for specific room types in your default settings. Next, let's go to our structure panel. And here you can change information about the ceiling heights in this room. So you can see that our current ceiling height is 107 and 5 eighths for our finished ceiling, which will be from our finished floor material to our finished ceiling. And if you're an existing Chief Architect user, you'll notice that this dialog box on the right hand side has been updated to make it more interactive. So as I hover our different values in the plan, you can see where these are located in the preview. If you need relative heights information to include more information about your ceiling, you may consider adjusting your rough ceiling. But for this project, we're just going to be dealing with our finished ceiling value. And we're going to go ahead and change this to a custom ceiling value of 80 inches from the floor to the ceiling. And then the next thing we're going to do is remove the flat ceiling over this room so that we can vault it. So I'm just going to uncheck this option. And you can see how that now looks in our little preview. And I'm just going to click OK. And now that we've specified this room as a master bath, you can see that room label that we got. And let's also take a back clipped cross section view and see how this is impacting our ceiling. So I'm going to go up to our camera tools and I'm going to select back clipped cross section. And I'm just going to click and drag and we're going to create a static 2D elevation view just through those two points that I've drug our mouse out towards. So you can see that our plan currently does not have a ceiling over it. And I actually want to work with both our elevation and our floor plan view side by side. So next I'm ready to add that vaulted ceiling onto our design. And there's two ways we can add a vaulted ceiling. The first way is if you go up to build, roof, you can see that you have a ceiling plane tool that you can use to click and drag and draw in new ceiling planes. And you can adjust the pitch of these individual ceiling planes and how they'll build in the plan. So that's the first way you can add a custom ceiling into your design. The second way is you can generate it by having the ceiling follow the underside of the roof. So I'm going to select this build roof option at the top. And then here there's a lot of different information that you can change about your roof. And if you're using Chief Architect Premier, you might have some of these options available that are not there available in Chief Architect Interiors. But for this project, we're going to just tell our program to auto rebuild roofs. And then we're also going to change the pitch of our roof to be a 6 and 12 pitch. And when we do this, Chief Architect is going to build our ceiling by following our roof plane. So let's click OK and see what happens. 
You can see in our cross-section view how we now have a roof over our design. In our floor plan view, you can see these green dashed lines where our roof planes are running. Let's go ahead and take a 3D view of the inside of our bathroom by going up to our 3D camera tools, selecting full camera, and then just click and drag to take a 3D view. So we can see how we have our ceiling planes generating, but with our roof automatically generating as a hip style roof, it looks a little bit odd. So let's go ahead and tell the program that we need to have a gable roof over our design. So I'm going to go back to our floor plan view, and then I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and select the walls that I want to change to a gable end. So I'm going to select this wall at the bottom, these two walls on the side, and then the wall at the top. In the bottom toolbar, there's a shortcut to create a, a gable roof. And when I click it with auto rebuild roofs turned on, you can see how we've now built a gable roof over our structure. So now that our roof planes are properly vaulted, our ceiling planes are also properly vaulted because they're set to follow the roof. Next, if you take a look at a photo of our final design in the back of our little alcove area, we actually have a ceiling present. So let's go ahead and separate this room from the remaining room in the structure and then specify that we will have a flat ceiling over this room. So to separate this little area of our plan from the remainder of our plan, I'm going to go up to our wall tools and I'm going to select a tool called our room divider, which will act as an invisible wall and allow us to separate areas within our plan. And then I'm just going to click and drag it across, press spacebar, and then now you can see how I can click on these two areas independently of each other. And we actually have another room label present, but I'm going to go ahead and open up this little room go to structure and then check the option for flat ceiling over this room and click OK. And if we go back to our 3D view, you can now see how we have our ceiling vaulted in the main body of our plan and our little alcove area for our bathtub is not vaulted. So now that our ceiling's complete, I'm going to go ahead and close our cross section elevation. And then let's go back to our floor plan view real quick. And you'll notice that we now have a lot of information being displayed. We have our walls, our dimensions, our roof planes, labels, and this might be too much information for what we're trying to do right now. And we can turn off the display of this type of information temporarily through the use of layers. I'm going to turn on our active layer display options, which is available in the toolbar right here. Or you can go to view and then active layer display options. And that'll pop up a dialog on the right hand side of the screen. And then you can just select on objects in your plan, see the layer that's affiliated with them, and then uncheck the display of them. So we're going to turn off the display of our roof planes. And then this room label, and then these automatic dimensions. Let's go ahead and turn off this invisible wall. And then our window and door labels. So by just taking a few seconds there, we've dramatically cleaned up our floor plan and are ready to work on the next part in our design, which is going to be changing the floor and wall materials like you see in the photo. So let's go ahead and do this. And to do this, I'm going to get back into our 3D view and I'm going to go ahead and open our library browser, which is where our materials are going to be stored along with objects that you can use in your design. And the library browser looks like these few books in your toolbar. And you can also get there by going up to View and then Library Browser. And then I'm just going to come over to our bonus catalogs, which you can download from the Chief Architect 3D Library on our website, where I already know that I have a material that is a tile that I want to use for our walls. So it's going to be under our Materials Tile folder, and then a Strip Textured Tile. And then I'm just going to select the material. And you can see now how my mouse changes to a spray can. And just by clicking on surfaces, we can change the material in our plan. And then this is going to be an automatically generated attic wall. And we're going to select yes that we want to change this material. And then we're just going to come to the back side of our plan. And then just change these walls as well. So the next material I want to change is going to be our flooring material. 
And we have this specific tile material currently because when we defined our room type as a master bathroom, the default settings for the master bath have this tile type associated with it. But I have a custom material in my user catalog, which is where you can store custom items that you've created or picked out or made to be used frequently in your designs. So I'm going to go to my user catalog and then just go to my materials folder and select the desired material that I already have for our flooring and then just click once and then let's make sure we got it in our little alcove area and there we've got the materials updated for the structure of our plan. So next we're ready to design our cabinetry and we're going to actually be designing our cabinetry around our Dura Supreme manufacturer. We're going to start by picking a specific door style that they offer and then create a custom texture using a material that Dura Supreme offers and applies it to our cabinet. Our cabinets are going to be floating cabinets and we're going to pick out specific hardware and design them accordingly. Here's a photo of a door style taken from Dura Supreme's website and it's going to be the Soho door style and we're going to be using the Macchiato gloss and a vertical strain. So let's go ahead and move our photo off to the side and adjust our camera view slightly. And we're actually going to start off by creating one cabinet and then save that cabinet as our default so that anytime we add any new cabinets into our plan, it's based off of that initial cabinet. So the first thing I need to do is place a base cabinet. And to do this, I can go up to our cabinet tools in the toolbar. And you can also access the same option by going to build and then down to cabinet. And then you'll have a lot of different cabinet options, uh, wall height wall cabinet, full height, a soffit, shelf, partition, countertop, and a backsplash. We're going to select the base cabinet and you can see in our plan how we get a little preview as to where we're placing it. And I'm just going to click once to place that cabinet. How manufacturer cabinets work in Chief Architect is you download their catalog from our website and then you apply their offerings onto the cabinet. So I'm going to get into our manufacturer catalogs where I've already downloaded our Dura Supreme catalog. I'm going to open it up and I know that that Soho door style is under the Bria option. And I'm just going to scroll down to where it's located and you can see that we have a Soho H and V option and this is just for how the uh, texture will apply whether you want it to apply horizontally or vertically. But I'm going to select the Soho V door and then just come into our plan and you'll notice how our mouse cursor changes once we get over our cabinet. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the drawer. And there we've applied the Dura Supreme Soho door and drawer to our cabinet. So next if you wanted to use a cabinet material that is already in the catalogs you can. Uh, you can see that in the Dura Supreme catalog that there's a folder for wood species and you could just select an acrylic or a finish or a gloss from here if you wanted to. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I wanted to show how you can take a photo from a texture on the website and create a custom material in Chief Architect with it. So what I've done with that photo on Dur Supreme's website is I've cropped it down a little bit so that all we have is the photo of the door. There's the finished photo we're going to be importing into Chief Architect. I'm going to go down to my user catalog and under my materials folder I'm going to right click, select new, and then select material. And then I'm just going to give this material a name. And then I'm going to go down to the texture folder. And then under texture source is where you're going to upload the image of the material that you want to bring into Chief Architect. So remember we're going to bring in this image and how we went from having this image down to just a photo of the door, down to just a photo of the material, is by using a third-party photo editing program such as the Microsoft Snipping and Paint tools. So I'm going to find that photo on my computer labeled Gloss Foil. Click on Open. And there you can see it applied to this teapot preview off to the right-hand side. And you can change the shape of this preview using the buttons towards the top right-hand corner. So there is a box which might be a little bit more appropriate for a cabinet. And you can actually see, if you zoom in close, where this material is repeating itself. So we're going to click on the stretch to fit option to have it fit over the entire box. 
So with that material how we like it, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And there you can see it in my user catalog. And if you right click on it and click on open object, you can continue to edit this material if you wanted to. But if you're happy with this material how it is, you can go ahead and just leave it. And then with our material selected, just come into your plan and you'll see how your mouse changes to a spray can. And you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner we have some scoping modes and we're currently in component mode, meaning we'll only change one component of this object. But since we want to change the entire object, let's go ahead and switch on over to object and then just click once on the cabinet. And there we've applied that material to our cabinet. So now that we have the design of this cabinet started, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and change the size of this cabinet so that it is floating off the floor. And then we're also going to change some of our hardware options and then the countertop material. So I'm going to go ahead and press spacebar and then select on the cabinet and then click on open object. And here you can change a lot of information about how you can edit this cabinet. We're currently on the general panel where we can change sizing information, information about the automatically generated countertops, which we'll show how to use the custom countertop tool here in a little bit. Information about the automatically generated backsplash. If you wanted to change the box construction so that it's framed or frameless where the overlay you can change the face of the cabinet in regards to how the doors and drawers are arranged and we'll edit this a little bit more here in a second. Change your door or drawer style or the handle styles cabinet wide and you can see how we, we have that Soho V door and drawer automatically applied to this cabinet. And if you wanted to change your door or drawer style on an individual face basis you can do that and we'll show you how to in a little bit. Add accessories to the cabinet change the molding, change the layer it's on, change the fill material, change materials on this cabinet, edit the label from the automatically generated label, change components for how they should display in the materials list, and add object information. And we're going to go through some of these panels here in a little bit. Off to the right hand side we have that 3D preview and on the right hand side above it you can change the rendering technique. We're currently in our vector view, but you can change it to a standard rendering technique if you'd prefer, or a glass house view so that you can see inside of it, or you can see how it looks in your plan view. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as our vector view, but next let's go ahead and go over to our general panel. And the first thing we're going to do is change the height of our cabinet. So we're going to change the height to be 27 inches, and the depth to be 21 inches, and then we're going to change the floor to bottom value to be 9 inches above the floor so that we maintain a level 36 inches from the finished floor to the top of the cabinet. Next I'm fine with our countertop and backsplash information how it is but I do want to remove the toe kick so I'm just going to type in 0 for our values there and then I'm fine with how our box is being constructed for this project so I'm just going to leave it how it is. As we go through and edit our individual cabinets later we'll be editing the face of the cabinets so I'm just going to leave this how it is. We do want to change our door handle style to have a more traditional bar pull. So I'm just going to click on the library browser and then go through the core catalogs to a bar pull I want to use for this cabinet. And we'll select this one with the label CP01V bar pull. And then for the drawer handle, actually before we do that, let's move it so that it's coming down from the top 9 inches and resting on our door. And then for the drawer handle, we're going to press on library. And instead of searching through the folders, we're going to type in the code of CP01 to pull it up. Select it, and then click OK. And you can see how that's looking in our little preview off to the right hand side. And then the next thing I want to change is going to be our countertop material that you see being displayed. So let's go ahead and edit that. To do this, I'm going to go down to the materials panel click on countertop, click on select material, and then here you can go through our uh, library browser to find a material for the countertop that you want to use. So if you're using a manufacturer material such as Cambria, you could go down in the material and find one that you want to use. But I'm going to just go ahead and type in the name of the material that I know I want to use. Select it and click OK. And then Chief Architect will automatically generate a label with your cabinet to be based off common industry nomenclature. But if you wanted to change it to be very specific, you can do that. 
and you can also use macros so that they automatically change their label when you resize and edit cabinets. And using macros is covered in additional training resources on our website. And then the next thing I want to change is going to be the object information. I'm going to go ahead and add our manufacturer of Dura Supreme. And the reason we're adding object information is so that when we use a schedule later, we can clearly see how our cabinets are labeled and use it for ordering. And then I'm also going to add some custom fields. I'm going to create a field for the line. Add Soho. And then create a field for our finish. And then add our gloss. And then once you're fine with this cabinet how it is, you can go in and click on OK. And you can see how this cabinet is being generated within our, floor, within our plan now. If we go up to our cabinet tools and then just click to add another cabinet into our design, you can see that it's different than the cabinet we just designed. And that's because this cabinet on the right is based off of our default settings and this is a custom cabinet we just created. So what we need to do is set this cabinet as our default. I'm going to go ahead and delete that other cabinet that we don't need. Select the cabinet that we just designed. And in the bottom toolbar, there's an icon that looks like a little wrench icon that says set as default. And when you click that, you're going to get a message letting you know that your cabinet default settings have been updated. And now whenever you add a cabinet to your design, it's going to be based off of those default settings that we just set. If you know that this is a cabinet you might use again in future plans, you can select it and then click on the button to add to user library. And now this cabinet's in your user library and whenever you create new plans you can select it and just quickly drop it into the plan. So that's one way Chief Architect can be a real time saver in that you can create objects, save them, and then use them in future plans. So now that we have our cabinets default set up just how we want them, let's go ahead and add the rest of our cabinetry. And I'm going to close our library browser and then just delete this ca these cabinets that we no longer need. Reposition our 3D view slightly against the wall that we want and then start to add our cabinets. And the first cabinet we're going to have is going to be a cabinet with some shelving. So I'm going to come up to our cabinet tools, select base cabinet, and then come along this wall. And notice how I put, if I push the cabinet into the corner there, it becomes a corner cabinet, which is nice for when you're working on kitchen projects. And with that cabinet selected, I'm now going to resize it to my desired dimensions. So I'm going to click on it. And you can see that the width is 24 inches. And I can just use these little handles on the size of the cabinet to resize it. So I'm going to select it and move it in. And notice that it bumps in three inch increments, which is a setting you can change within the default settings of the program. But now we're ready to edit the face of the cabinet so that it's going to be open shelving. So I'm going to double click on it. And then I'm just going to click on the door that we see in our preview. And notice how that brings us to our front side's back panel. And if you wanted to change this door to be any other common item face, you can do so by changing the item type right here. So if you want to change it to a drawer or an opening or anything else you can, um, and because this is going to be open shelving, it will eventually be just an opening. If you want to change the item height, you could do so here. If you wanted to specify the shelves inside of it, you can change it from the automatic shelf behavior to have a manual amount of shelves. Or you can insert library items in a cabinet, such as a Revis shelf accessory. Next, if you wanted to insert a an appliance into the cabinet, you could do so here. Or if you wanted to change the door style on an individual component basis or the door handle, you can do so here. We're going to go ahead and leave the makeup of this cabinet how it is. But what we're going to do is delete the door and the drawers so that we have some open shelves. So in our little face items box where we can edit how this cabinet is composed, I'm just going to delete the door. And you can see how we have an opening right here. And then I'm just going to select on the drawer. And you can see that over in the, the face items box. Delete it. And now we have just one big opening for, our, for the cabinet shelves. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now that cabinet's just how I like it within our 3D view. And if you go back to our floor plan view, you can see how the nomenclature on it has already been updated. I'm going to continue designing within our 3D view. And I'm going to add another base cabinet. And our second base cabinet is going to have 
uh, three drawers and the top two are going to be the same size and the bottom one is going to be a larger size and they're going to be split up so that the bottom one takes up half and then these two take up the other half. So let's go ahead and make this change. I'm going to double click on the cabinet, click on the door, go ahead and delete it and you can see how that's now an opening and I'm going to delete this opening so that now we just have one giant drawer instead. With that drawer selected, I'm going to go to our next option, which is to split it horizontally. And now we have two separate drawer items in this cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and split this top one horizontally again, so that we have two small drawers and then one larger drawer. If you wanted this to be three drawers all the same size, you can click at the top up here and then quick, click on equalize and it'll make them all the same size. So that's just a nice, quick and easy tool to quickly equalize the face of your drawer items. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now our second cabinet is complete. So next let's go ahead and place our center cabinet that will hold our sink. And I'm just going to resize it to 36 inches. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click on it to open it up. And all I'm going to do is remove the false drawer just as a matter of personal preference. Click on OK. And then next add a sink into the cabinet by going back to our user library. And then I'm just going to type in the model number for the sink, which is a sink from our Kohler manufacturer brand. So I'm going to click on it and then right click and then select show in browser. And if we scroll up a little bit, you can see how it's coming from our Kohler catalog, the bathroom, sinks, and then it's from their Archer line. And I'm just going to come over to our cabinet and click once to place it. And then if I go back down to my user library, I already have a set of faucets that I want to use with it. So I'm going to come in and just click once to place it. And there we go. And that's going to complete all the cabinetry we're going to design in this project. So next, if you take a look at the photo of the final cabinetry design, we have a copy of these cabinets on the other side. So what we're going to do is once again use that copy and reflect about tool to place those cabinets. So I'm going to select the two cabinets holding control there, press copy, reflect about object, and then just reflect them to the other side. And there we've completed designing the cabinetry on the side of the wall. Next we're going to add a few more items on the side. At this point we're going to go ahead and add our sconces, a backlit mirror, a towel holder, and then an under cabinet rope light which is a new feature in X11. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our user library and then I'm going to go ahead and select the sconce that I want. Just place it into the design and then I also have a backlit mirror that I've already created and then I'm just going to rotate it in on my floor plan view. Center it over our sink and then just back it up so it's against the wall. And there are our backlit mirrors in place. So then I'm just going to place a copy of this sconce on the other side of the mirror by selecting it. Copy, reflect about, and then I'm going to add our towel holder. And then the last thing I'm going to do is use our new rope lighting tool to add some light underneath the cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and close our library browser, go back to our floor plan view, and then you can see how yeah, we're starting to get layers for the new objects that we've added into the plan. And our new rope light tool is going to be underneath our electrical objects. And I'm just going to click and drag where I want this rope light to be. About there is fine. And then I'm going to select it. Once again, center it up along the cabinet. And maybe move it more to the front. And then if you want to open it up, we can specify the height off the finished floor to, should be 9 inches so that it's sitting just on the bottom side of that cabinet. And you can increase or decrease the amount of lights you have, the light display, and then change the light data um, so that they're brighter if you would prefer. We're going to go ahead and leave this how it is and just click OK. And then next if you take a look at the completed design, you'll notice that we have the his and her cabinetry on either side of the plan. And so once again, we're just going to use that copy and reflect about tool to get that to the other side. So we're going to zoom a little bit and then just pressing space bar and then marquee over the items in our plan. 
Once we have them selected, we're going to press copy, reflect about, reflect them about the room. And there we've got them on the other side. If we go back to our 3D view and then just zoom back, you can see how we now have the cabinetry design complete in our plan. We've been working in our standard rendering technique up to this point, but we also have different rendering techniques and we previewed the vector view rendering technique when we were designing our cabinetry. In your toolbar at the top right here, you can select different rendering techniques. So there's our standard technique. You can switch to a vector view, a glass house view, a dual tone, a technical illustration, a painting, a watercolor, line drawing, and physically based rendering, which is close to ray tracing. Let's go ahead and switch back to our standard rendering technique. Next, we're going to go ahead and add a toilet and then create a wall elevation like you see here for use on our layout sheet that we will create later on. So let's go ahead and close our 3D view. And now we're back in our floor plan view. And to add our toilet, let's go ahead and open up our library browser. And I've already got a toilet saved in our user catalog. And I'm just going to click and drop it in. And then to create a wall elevation, you just go up to your elevation cameras, select wall elevation, and then click and point the camera at the wall you want to take a wall elevation of and release. And there we've got a wall elevation created. And then to get dimensions like you see in that final layout sheet where you can get center lines, sizes of your cabinets, going to specific objects, it's very easy in Chief Architect. Underneath our dimension tools, we have an option for NKBA auto elevation dimensions. If you click this once, it's automatically going to place dimensions around your plan where you will commonly need them. You can edit these dimensions and delete them. So for example, if we click on the string on the right, you see we get a little diamond handle come up and you can click it to drag new points. You can delete points. You can delete these strings altogether and you can move objects. So for example, if we wanted this toilet to be 36 inches away from the wall on the center line, we can select the toilet, select the dimension, and then just type in our new dimension. So you can see how this efficiency feature with the NKBA auto elevation dimensions is really powerful for quickly creating wall elevations and dimensioning them. Once you're happy with how your elevation looks, you can go ahead and save it by pressing the save camera button in the top toolbar and then close it. And then you get that little camera marker in your plan where it's saved. And then later on, we'll reuse that elevation again for use in our layout sheet. Next, let's go ahead and add our bathtub in this little alcove area towards the back. So we're gonna build a little half wall uh, with a countertop on top to hold our sink faucet. We're going to place the bathtub, change our materials, and then add some lights. And let's work in both our 2D and 3D view at the same time. So I'm going to go up to our camera tools and I'm going to use the full camera and just click and point it in that area that we need to see. And then position it down. And then once again to work in both 2D and 3D, I'm just going to grab this tab at the top and pull it over to the side of the screen and then zoom in close. And there's several ways you can create that little half wall on the back in Chief Architect. I'm going to be using a tool called the Soffit tool, which is a nice option because it'll automatically wrap our base molding around it. So I'm going to go up to our cabinet tools, select Soffit, and then just click and place it in the design. And you can see where it comes up in our 3D view, but we'll bring that down to the floor here in a second. But for now, I'm just going to select it and you can see we get our size. So I'm going to just type in my new desired size, 4.5 inches, and then drag it to the wall on the other side. And then I'm going to double click to open it up. And then I'm going to change the height of it to be 19 inches. Press tab. And then our floor to bottom value, I'm going to change to be zero inches. Press tab. And then just click OK. And you can see in our 3D view how that's updated and how we have the base molding wrapping around the soffit. And then to change the material, I'm just going to go to our 3D view and I'm going to select the material eyedropper, which will allow you to then select a material off a surface. And notice how my mouse there changes to a spray can. And then when I come over to my soffit and click on it, 
we'll apply our material to the soffit. So next I need to get a little cap on it like you see in a photo of our design. So to do this I'm going to use the custom countertop tool which is available underneath your cabinet options and this is a great tool for just free hand drawing countertops or countertops with overhangs. So I'm just going to come in and click and drag approximately where I want it. We'll come back and tune in the sizing of it here in a little bit. And you can see where it's coming in in our 3D view. But I'm going to select it and then resize it to 5 inches so that we have a half inch overhang. And then we're going to open it up and reposition its height above the ground. So we're going to uncheck this option for set height from cabinet. And instead we're going to specify the finished floor to bottom to be 19 inches so that it's going to sit right on top of that soffit. And click OK. And there we've got that in place. And then next in the photo of the final design you'll see we have a rock stone material instead of the current material. So to add this what I'm going to do is I'm going to elect to use the custom backsplash tool to show you how that works. So to get to that tool you go up to your cabinet options select custom backsplash and then come over to the wall you want to apply it on and then just click once and you can see how that applied in our view and notice that it didn't cut a hole through the window that's because this is a smart tool that knows to cut around openings and then to change the material on our backsplash you just go up to the library browser go to that materials folder that I have select our material and then just apply it up oh, wrong material there. There we have our correct material. And then let's just go ahead and drop in our bathtub while we're here. So I'm going to do this within our floor plan view. Select our bath faucet trim and just click once to place it. And you can see where it's coming in our 3D view. So let's bring it up off the floor by double clicking on it to open it up. And then we know our soffit is 19 inches off the ground. Our countertop is an inch and a half thick, so we need our finished floor to bottom to be 20 and a half inches. And press enter. And you can see how that updated. And then let's center it more on our soffit. That's looking better. And then next we need to drop in the bathtub, which I already have picked out in our user library. And then just click once to place it. And then if you want to center it in that area, you can select it and then once again use that center object tool to center it. And then the last thing I want to do in Siri of the plan is add our lights. So I'm going to go back to our catalog where I've already got the light picked out that I want to use. And then I'm just going to come into our plan and click once to place it. And you can see how that was added in our 3D view. Next let's go ahead and close our library browser. And the next part of our project that I want to work on is going to be the glass shower. So we're going to transition back to over by that sliding door. And we're just going to use our new glass shower pony wall tool to draw in our glass shower. Go ahead and add our hardware from our user library. You can change your materials if you desire. And then add our glass shower door. So let's go ahead and shift our focus. We're going to turn around to the side of the plan. And then to add the glass shower, I'm going to go up to our wall tools, select straight glass pony wall, and then just click and drag approximately where we want that glass shower to be, and we'll fine tune the positioning of it here in a second. We might want to bump it up a little bit closer to the counter, to the cabinet. And then if you wanted to dial in these dimensions, you could dial these in. And let's come over to our 3D view and adjust our materials. So I'm going to go to our library browser and then just pick a tile that I've already got selected and apply it to our walls in the, on the pony wall. Zoom into the inside of the shower and make sure we get both of these walls. And then while I'm in the shower you'll notice that we have a base molding inside which we don't want. So to, move, to remove that is easy. We'll just double click in the shower room and that's going to pop up our room specification dialog box and if we wanted to give this a new room type we could maybe we would type in master shower here but to remove that room molding we just go down to the moldings panel 
uncheck use floor default and then if you wanted to add a new room molding or add like a crown molding you, you could do so here but for this project we just want to delete this molding in the shower and then click OK and that got rid of our molding and then let's go ahead and change our countertop material to match what we've been using so I'm going to use that material eyedropper tool again select the material and then just click to apply it on the ledge and then you'll also notice in the final rendering that that's the same material we have present in the shower so let's go ahead and go back into the shower got to pick up that material one more time and then just click to apply it to these walls and you can see how it's starting to come together and then next let's go ahead and add our hardware and I already have this saved off in our user catalog and let's actually add this from within our floor plan view so I'm going to go down to the catalog and then just click once in the shower and then just rotate it into position and then I'm going to make sure we have it snug in the corner down here so there we've got our shower hardware and then next we need to go ahead and add the door for the shower. So to do that we'll go back to our 3D camera and we could have done that in a floor plan view. And I'm just going to go up to our door tools and add mention, as mentioned earlier we have a new glass shower door in version X11. So I'm going to select the tool and then you can see I get that outline as to where it's going to be placed. And if I click once I can place it and there we've got that door added and if we go back to our floor plan view you can see that it's swinging the wrong direction so let's go ahead and make a few adjustments to that and then we actually want it to swing both ways so if we double click on it to open it up and then go down to the options panel and then check this box for swings both directions we'll get an indicator letting us know that this door swings both directions and then next I need to add our hardware to it so I'm going to go down to the hardware option and then under interior handle I'm going to select library and then just type in the name of the handle that I know I want to use and you can see that brings up a lot of options and this is the handle I want which if I click right click and select show in browser you can see it comes from our architectural core catalogs hardware door hardware and then under commercial hardware. And then we're going to do the same thing for the exterior side. And you can see how that door is coming together in our little 3D preview. And then next we need to add some hinges for this shower door. And I'm going to click on library. And then go to our bonus catalogs where we have a shower hardware catalog and this is the one of those catalogs you'll need to download from our website click OK and then let's go ahead and add a third hinge and there you can see all of those hinges added and then if we go back to our 3D view that's going to nearly complete our shower and one other nice tool that we have in Chief Architect is an automatic wall niche tool so if we go back to our floor plan view and then go under the wool, the window tools we have a wall niche and if you go over to this wall you can see where it's going to be placed within our floor plan view and then in our 3D view you can see it added and then once again we would just use that material eyedropper to pick up the material off the wall and apply it to the backing of that wall niche so next let's work on our electrical plan a little bit you can see that we already got some electrical items started with our rope light and our wall sconces but let's add a few can lights and then just show how you can connect them in Chief Architect so I'm going to go ahead and close this 3D view close our library browser and then zoom out a little bit and then since we're working with electrical objects now I'm going to switch from our working plan view to our electrical plan view and plan views essentially isolate your tools and features to the area of the plan that you want to work on that particular point in time so I'm going to switch on over to our electrical plan view which will optimize the program for working with our electrical objects and click yes we'll save our working plan view 
and you can see how that cleaned up our floor plan really quickly and then to add some can lights I'm just gonna go up to our electrical tools select light and then I'm just gonna place a few for the purposes of this example so if I wanted a few can lights on each side I could go through manually place the lights and then manually make copies and to redimension them and place them around but we have a really fast and efficient tool in Chief Architect called multiple copy and the way this tool works is you select the object and then select intervals that you want to place copies of this object so with our first can light in our plan I'm going to select the light go down to the multiple copy tool in the bottom toolbar and then select the set interval and then here you can say we want to evenly distribute copies of this object when dragging or you can specify a specific interval of this copy. So for example, on the top, that would mean every 36 inches I click and drag my mouse, we'd place one. Or if we do evenly distribute copies, we'll evenly distribute a specified amount of copies. So I'm gonna select this option and I'm gonna select our primary number to be one and then our second number to be two. And what this means is we're gonna place one copy and then this direction and then two copies of the set going down in our plan. So with that specified, I'm going to press OK. And then as I bring my mouse into the plan, when I hover over the electrical object, see how our mouse changes there? And when I right click and drag, I've got one copy coming out. And then when I release and then drag down, you can see how I have two more copies. And then when I left click, we'll place them. So that's a really quick way how you can place electrical objects in Chief Architect. And then to connect those lights, I'm just going to go up to our electrical tools, select a switch, and then our space is getting a little bit tight, but I'm just going to place a switch there. And then you can go back up to your electrical tools, select connect electrical, and then just drag from the switch to the light to indicate that those objects are being connected. And there we've got our electrical plan started. And then if we go back to our electrical tools, one more tool I want to show you is our auto place outlets. And because we had defined this room as a bathroom, it's going to place GFCI outlets approximately where you would need them. And I'm just going to click once and you can see where it placed them. And also the auto place outlets will give you a light over your sink, but in this case we don't need them. So we can just delete those extra lights. And let's go ahead and take a 3D view real quick to see what we've got. So you can see how this plan is starting to come together. We mentioned our 3D rendering techniques earlier, but I just want to go through them again. We have the vector view, the glass house view, dual tone, technical illustration, painting, watercolor is the one we demoed it earlier. And this is one that adds a lot of character to your designs in my opinion. And you can also specify to have a line drawing on top of it. So this is going to be more of an artistic view that your clients might like. And then we also have physically based rendering, which is going to be close to the photorealism. And then if you wanted to create a photorealistic render, you could use the ray tracing feature in the software. And here's just a quick example of a ray trace on our final construction document that was created within the software. So next let's go ahead and create a schedule for our cabinets. I'm going to go ahead and close this 3D view. And then to create a schedule you go up to your CAD options and then go to CAD detail management. And the CAD detail management is generally where you'll store your schedules in Chief Architect. So I'm going to select the schedules detail and then open it up. And then this is essentially a blank canvas where you can draw any CAD work or edit CAD worker if you would like to. But to add a schedule, you'll go up to Tools, Schedules, Cabinet Schedule, and then just click once to place it. And then here's our basic cabinet schedule, and we can edit what columns and information we see. So let's go ahead and double click on it. And let's go ahead and add a 3D elevation view in our columns to include. And then let's also add information about our line and finish that we added earlier. So I'm gonna go down to Finish and add it. And then down to line and add our line 
And then I'm going to go ahead and remove our comments and our code since we aren't using those columns. Click OK. And you can see how that schedule is starting to come together. And you'll notice that we have a number available on our schedule. And this will replace the traditional label that we saw within our floor plan. So if we go back to our plan, and then let's switch our plan view real quick to be our kitchen and bath plan view. We now have those callouts instead of those labels. And if you prefer to see the cabinet label instead of the cabinet callout number that was generated from the cabinet schedule, in your cabinet schedule there's a setting that you can check to see the cabinet label instead of the cabinet callout. So next let's transition into creating a layout sheet that you might pass off to your local building department or a contractor. And to create a layout sheet you can go up to File, New Layout, but I've already got a layout sheet started that we're going to be using. And here on this layout sheet, you can put your company's information, your company's logo and address. If you wanted to put a client's address or information, you can. In this case, we've opted to have um, the name of our different sheets. And you can put other information about the project in it as well. So here we have a cover page. And if we wanted to include a 3D render like we see in ours, um, we could do that. You can also use the text tools in the program to add text onto the plan. But for this example, let's go ahead and add a um, general floor plan onto the layout sheet. So I'm going to go back to our floor plan view. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And then you'll want to turn on and off individual layers that you want to send over to your floor plan view. So for example, if, if we think that our la room labels are getting a little cluttered, we might turn those off. So I'm going to turn on our active layer display options, select our room labels, and then just go ahead and turn those off. And then on our elevation camera, we don't need that name of it, so we'll go ahead and remove the label. And then we'll go ahead and remove the door and window labels as well, since they aren't necessary. Okay, so that cleaned up our floor plan view a little bit. And if you're happy with how this is displayed and you're ready to send it to the layout, you click this button near your top toolbar for send to layout. And then you can specify a lot of information about how you would want to send it over to your layout. But the most important piece is going to be the scale. I'm going to do a half inch scale and click OK. And there we've got our floor plan on our layout sheet. And if you wanted to resize this box, you could go ahead and do that. And then I'm holding the control button and I'm just going to move it on into the corner. And if you wanted to include any notes or 3D view, you can do that. And this completed layout sheet, we've opted to have a dollhouse view and send that on over to our layout sheet as well. But next, let's send a wall elevation that created, we created earlier over. So I'm going to go to my desired layout sheet, go back to our floor plan, double click to open this wall elevation. And there we can see that wall elevation. And if you're happy with how it's being displayed, go ahead and send it on over to your layout sheet. And you can specify whether you want it to update on demand or update always. Click OK. And you can see that we have quite a bit of space left on this layout sheet. So let's go ahead and resize it by selecting it. And then in the bottom toolbar, there's an option that looks like a little ruler that you can use to rescale the layout view. Let's change that to a half inch and click OK. And then you could just re reposition this on the layout sheet where you wanted to. And then if you wanted to send over your schedule with the cabinets, you would just go back to your schedule and then send that on over to your layout and specify the scale here as well. And then continue sending any other pieces of information on over your layout sheet, maybe a 3D view, maybe different floor plan views, such as that electrical plan that we just created. And that's going to conclude today's demonstration.